news, and I, I think we should begin the show with some good news. Uh, did you know, I saw this um, Kids First Fund. I follow the Kids First Fund from his time here, obviously, in a great organization, and they continue to do great things. I saw where the Kids First Fund posted. Uh, a, a, it started with some A&M fan after they beat Alabama. What was that final, 41-38? So, yeah, it was a three-point game. Yeah. I think it was 41-38. to Um and so uh, the bottom line is somebody donated at one point, um, somebody donated $41,380. Holy cow. In honor of the 4138 score. Well, it caught on. And all these people began donating, not 41,000, although there's plenty of oil people there to do that. But, you know, it would be like they would, you know, Four thousand one hundred right, or forty-one dollars thirty-eight cents, right, which right, is right. a great donation in, in its own right. Correct, yeah. correct. But people, some de some denomination of that. That's what they were doing, and they were they were using that. And it it's in just this week they raised over one hundred and seven thousand dollars. That's awesome. It was awesome. And good, it made job. Me good job. Good job, people. Cultish aggy people. No, Put it to good use. No, they did a good job. It's like Bill's Mafia. You know, when they donate, well, you're like, oh, all right, y'all yeah, yeah. are a little nuts. You are very nuts. Yeah. But, you know, if Andy Dalton helps you with a big win, you donate a bunch of money to his charity. Yeah. So good for you. Yeah, no, it's good. It's good. People helping people is a very good thing. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, I saw that. Just, just, it's not how I planned on starting the show, but I just thought about it and it was very cool uh, because you went organized. Dose. It's amazing how one word can change an opener. Oh boy! Organized, yeah. That was, that was Society. Good. This is what happens when we're not organized. Uh, it's so, like I always say, <laughs> you've never said what you're you've about never to say said it. ever. Countdown: three, two, one. You've never said that. Uh, Redemption Thursday wagers were harder to harder to come by today. I I, I woke up conflicted. I was I was struggling. Boy, we post those suckers for the quickness. Before I ever say a game, it's just wham, there it is. If you're on the War Chant TV feed, you get a sneak peek. That's what you get, a sneak peek. Uh, actually, just fun to say. Uh, also, I it does make me smile every time I see the Metro Deli. And uh, I don't see why not, guy. It makes me laugh. Oh, these are picks. I don't see why not. Let me make them. Not, yeah. yeah. And then I like, there's my face picking up the cash from the ATM. You guys did a great job with this thing. Thanks to Metro Deli, who sponsors Redemption Thursday. They're the best. MetroDeliTally.com, if you want to look at the menu. Uh, you were there eating today. I was. I had my breakfast today. I hadn't been there in a couple of weeks, and I felt dirty inside because I like to go there for breakfast at least once a week. Yeah. Yeah, help support those that support us and uh, do business with those who do business with us. Um, also, we're friends with them. Here's the deal. So went with the picks. Uh, I, I, you know, I've been, I've had a winner every week. They don't win on the field, but they cover like clockwork. Here we go. Here are the picks. Let's get them started. Let's get this rolling. Nebraska minus four and a half against Minnesota. I've been picking Nebraska uh, time and again, and so I'm going to continue to do this here. I'll go Nebraska minus four and a half. Uh, I took Texas A&M to roll this Mizzou team. Uh, minus nine and a half. Missouri is a special kind of bad on defense. It really is hard to watch. Um, it's really, really kind of ugly. Um, and actually, I did capitalize, didn't I? I capitalized oh, a, a couple of teams I didn't, I guess. People were wondering if I properly capitalized the home teams. Did Matthew put it in wrong? He probably did. <laughs> Uh, Purdue, uh, Mizzou's defense is the reason for that pick. Purdue uh, at Iowa, under 44. Two teams play good defense. Iowa plays a special brand of defense. Uh, I'll just take the under 44 there. Western Kentucky and Old Dominion. Tom, if you were paying attention yesterday, oh, I imagine we're going to get a siren for this one because it's Western Kentucky and Old Dominion. Oh, we got a new one. I can feel it all the way down. <laughs> well done. We're adding to the list. Yeah, that's the. I didn't know GIFs worked on the feed. That's Neither did I, but they right. do. All right. It's a, it's a bold game day. changer. Yeah. Western Kentucky, Old Dominion, over 66. And if you were paying attention yesterday, you know exactly why I did that uh, with the pick today, right? I gave you the 5 and 0 to the over, Western Kentucky this year. Uh, Texas Tech minus 16 and a half against Kansas. Kansas hasn't covered a game yet this year that I'm aware of. Give me Texas Tech. Basically, this is a bet against Kansas every week type of thing. Whoa! <laughs> I'm going to take Stanford on the road to beat Washington State. Uh, wait, just, wait a second. I know that's a Power 5 game, but Texas Tech-Kansas, it does qualify as a siren-worthy game. That's absurd. Well, Who's paying attention to Texas Tech-Kansas? You are. Well, you got to pay attention more to the gift that is Kansas uh, because that is the biggest thing. It could have been any team on the other side there. 
<laughs> but this week it's Texas. Could have been ITT Tech. Yeah, could have been. I mean, the Kansas is a special kind of bad. And then uh, I took Stanford, gave two to Washington State, Kansas State, Iowa State, two defenses uh, that uh, will hit you. I actually kind of like watching these teams play the game just because they're rugged throwbacks. They both want to run the ball. They both play good defense. So that uh, moved me towards the under for the game, under 51 and a half there. So I'm going to do under 51 and a half. We're at the time of year where Vegas has a lot of teams figured out. And when you get to that time of year, a lot of times I like to play totals. As opposed to, because you can count, you know, your buddy, you can find out about the wind. You can mm -hmm. find out, you That's know, right. 25 yep. mile per hour win. Okay. Both teams play good defense. Uh, the spread, not so much. The total, let's go under here. Let's go with yeah. the defense. He's yeah. one for one on the season so far. Yeah. Uh, does he got weather in Philadelphia tonight? What do we? Oh, uh, I'll check it. I'll check it. Uh, it's going to be important. Uh, so anyhow, I did Kansas State, Iowa State under 51 and a half. And then I got three NFL games this week. I actually like the card in the NFL this week more than I do the college game, which is pretty rare. But I took the Bucks tonight, given six and a half against the Eagles. Just not in love with that Eagles secondary. And I do love the weapons that the Bucks have, even with Gronk out. And I also don't worry as much this year for the letdown road games, primetime games. The Bucks weren't good in those games last year. Uh, but they also spent the vast majority of the year trying to figure out who the hell they were. And once they figured it out, obviously, like, for example, the road game last year against the uh, Bears that they lost, where Brady forgot the down situation. I mean, that team clearly was nowhere close to what they would become. They are a fully realized group. Now we know who they are and they light it up most days and they're mature enough with a guy like Brady at quarterback to go and play a good football game tonight. We'll, we'll, we'll see, but I like him. I'll give it's less than the touchdown. I thought if that number comes out and it's anything less than seven, I'm going to take it. The weather will not impact a thing tonight. It's going to be perfect in Philadelphia in the upper sixties, low seventies, no wind, no precipitation, there is an orange game on the card, though, this weekend. I don't know. You want to know about it now? Or? Sure. Let's throw uh, it out there to our listeners. It's Arizona-Cleveland. In Cleveland, winds around 15 to 20 miles mm. an hour, sustained with stronger gusts. Cleveland's so, favored in that game, by the way. All right. I'm kind of surprised by Let's that. See what that total is. Yeah. i uh, have to look at that number as well. Uh, and then there's Green Bay minus four and a half against the Bears. I think it's too much for Justin Fields this early in that rivalry game. Give me Green Bay there. And then I'll take Kansas City to get right on the road. What happened to this Washington defense? Where have they gone? Oh, they're terrible. They over 31 points a game. They were the best. At the end of the year last year, you could argue they were the best defense in football, not named Tampa Bay. They were fantastic. I don't know what happened to that team. So I'm done waiting. I'm just going to take Kansas City to go on the road and get healthy and, and get right and win this game by more than a touchdown uh, or by more than a six and a half, anyhow. Uh, yeah, so I see this, uh, Will. Not, listen, they're not going to get every game right. It, 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 is, it, it is played by humans. Um, but uh, by and large, the card you'll see tightens up a little bit because Vegas has a better understanding of who teams are and what they trended towards. So here's what's interesting. I'm looking up advanced metrics on the Washington football team and their defense. And their pass rush is still ranked second in football. Second best. Mm. But if you look at their coverage, they're in the bottom five league-wide. So well, you could get the ball out early against them, and you're going to be throwing to wide open spaces, apparently. That's I what also the scout think it skews the coverage. I mean, it skews the uh, sack numbers because teams decide to line up and throw it every play because they know they can. So they get more opportunities. Yeah, the company that the Washington football team keeps in terms of coverage is the following. Detroit, Jacksonville, Indy and the Bears. Mm. That's where they are right now. That'll hurt your feelings there, buddy. Uh, I saw, what was the number, the top five offenses in the NFL um, estimated points added. Uh, the Bucks were top five, but uh, it was, it, it. the Chiefs were second is the reason I bring it up. And that tells you just how bad their defense has been because the, the predicament they find themselves in with the record at this point, they've had the number two rated offense and expected points added to uh, this year uh, behind the chargers who are just phenomenal. And, uh, you know, that's just, it's interesting. The bucks were there. I, I think they were five. Uh, Dallas was just ahead of Tampa Bay. Mm -hmm. Dallas was yeah, week one. win actually looks that's better a, and better. As time goes on. Yeah, it really does. It, it, the more you go back and look at that, the more you're like, okay, all right, that's a big ass win. That was huge. Bucks played well. Dallas has looked great. Might need that for a breaker later in the season. We don't know. Yeah. Dallas has looked really good and actually they've been enjoyable to watch. Uh, I mean, when you watch the style of play, uh, is, is rather enjoyable. I don't know if you did this or not, but I did. 
Um, I saw where, uh, you know, I, I sat down and I saw warchant.com. I saw the headlines. A.J. Duffy amped up about future of FSU football and recruiting. So Michael Langston wrote a story a couple hours ago. It's there. You can find it. That's what I do the most of, although the Knowles have injected life into the current season, somewhat surprisingly, by getting healthy and going out and playing a really good game. Um, so now you're in, you're locked back in. Now it's a bye week, obviously, but you're locked back in for the actual games on Saturdays. But I had skewed towards just constantly focusing on that recruiting class and who we were going to get because obviously you got to raise the floor around here and you got to find some depth. Florida State doesn't have a lot of depth. So anytime one of those guys that's on that list say that they're still locked in and, and, and moreover, they say they're locked in and excited, well, now there you go. Then I get excited. That's what I'm talking about. So good to see A.J. Duffy uh, amped up about the future of Florida State football. Well, I can give you a little behind the scenes on that particular piece, too, because on Tuesday afternoon, we were going through uh, the content schedule for the bye week and into next week. And a lot of the guys are putting out a lot of stuff. I, I feel kind of lame. Uh, but Michael said that, listen, I can get Duffy to, to talk to me pretty quickly because he's excited about talking about Florida State. Yeah. So this turned that around in less than a couple of days, and he had the interview necessary to get it done. That I like that. Sometimes sometimes recruits that are going to come here and are all Noel anyway, they mm -hmm. don't want to talk to you. But if somebody says, oh, please, can I talk about Florida State football, and they happen to be the quarterback, the headliner quarterback of the next class, that's some behind-the-scenes stuff that you want to hear, which is, yes, please, where can I talk about Florida State more? Where can I talk about my excitement level to be in Tallahassee more? I love that, man. Get that, that out there, man. That's right. Get get me the cornerstone guys of this class, the Travis Hunters of the world, Duffy's of the world, those guys. Get them talking about how excited they are to be coming here still at this juncture of the season. Yes, more of that. Um, I, I I appreciate that. Uh, and, and I think that whole dynamic has shifted now because I want to see how much more it may be the answer is very little. But – you're just scratching the surface. You're barely you're barely on page two of the playbook right now offensively. They have found something that Jordan Travis has gotten very comfortable with now that he's healthier, and he's doing a good job of all the read option stuff, and that is very important because it allows him to take advantage of a dynamic skill set athletically. It also opens up the passing game down the field. We only threw 13 times last week. 11 of 13. At one point, he completed 11 straight passes. But you notice all those big plays down the field are open because of the threat of his legs. And they were also one half of the field reads. So he's not having to read the whole field, although he did have a couple of those. And that's where I got excited because I said, all right, well, if we're getting healthier up front and Jordan's getting more comfortable uh, playing the position of quarterback, not, not by name, but by playing the position of quarterback, what might we see in addition to what they've already now repped enough to look proficient? Are we now going to see added elements? Because the answer has to be yes. They want that. They've desperately wanted that. It's why they took the flyer they did on McKenzie Milton, hoping that they could have a drop back pass game because that is a big part of what Norvell can do. I do like that his offense is very malleable. They, they kind of look at personnel and then figure, all right, well, we'll emphasize this aspect of our offense. But he wants to certainly add more. We're very one-dimensional right now, and if you play certain teams, you can get shut down with that. So now that Jordan hit a couple of crossers, stayed in the pocket a few times, also very comfortable, um, you know, with the read. So if that if that happens, you know, you have this bye week, you got UMass next week. What more in the way of wrinkles are we going to see added to this offense this year? It may be you don't have the personnel. You might not have the receivers to do much more than what you have right now. And and, and I, that's fine. At least you've settled in on an identity. But I, I am curious to see what else is added. And and why did I bring that up in relation to recruiting? Well, you know, the thought a couple of weeks ago was, well, you're just going to have to start A.J. Duffy next year as a true freshman and take your lumps because we really don't have guys that can play uh, at, at, at a high level at that position right now. Well, maybe not. Let's slow our roll there. It would be beneficial if Jordan Travis continues to grow and progress in his ability to ascertain more of this offense and to be a multi-read guy and add other parts of the playbook, because you would really like, I think, A.J. Duffy to come in and sit 
you don't, we got to get out of this cycle we're in. We've got to get to a place where we can create talented depth that allows guys to grow and get better in a more reasonable time frame. You don't want to accelerate everybody that comes in here who has a little bit of ability, but that's what we've had to do. Yeah, the big time programs have an on field product and then they almost have the academy for the redshirt season and maybe another season for seasoning to get everybody ready to go. And then you have late bloomers. Uh, you know, one great example in recent Knoll history is Lamarcus Brutus, who nobody thought anything of until he was on the field and he realized how valuable that player was. Well, it's because he was developed for so long. I don't know that if he had played as a true freshman, we would have ever gotten to the place where he would have been as reliable by the time his career was over. The one thing I'd say about Jordan Travis, though, is they may look like they're presenting new wrinkles and they're calling the same plays. Because the reason yeah. I'll say that is if you listen to both Norvell and Dillingham, I don't uh, on Monday, I don't think it was a motivational ploy. They're saying he made some correct choices, but there are more correct choices out there to be made. So that tells me that on a couple of key plays, yeah, he, hint, he, hint, he, he you go back there, there may be a better read, but he made he made a good decision, a correct decision, but there is a better decision to make. And so we might see in the future him make the best possible choice. Looks like we're running something different. We're running a counterpunch to the play call that happened in Chapel Hill, but it might be the exact same freaking call. Yes, there will be elements of that. I know one play that he absolutely misread, and then he got poor uh, Corbin crushed. Uh, but but that, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was most unfortunate. But that said, uh, yeah, he may do that and grade out at 100, but clearly they... They, they are running some different plays. I mean, the offense we ran in this last game was not the offense we ran against. Oh, Syracuse. no, I'm talking about moving yeah. forward. I'm not. No, yes, that 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 looked much different. And it looked like that they were in a way conceding like, you know what? Let's let's play within his skill set and then expand out. It could be that they had more time and he had more reps and practice reps so they could get used to it. But mm -hmm. I, there were some. Oh, absolutely. There were some much different concepts. But there are a couple of plays that we hit that are pretty big that might have been bigger if he looked somewhere else and that's where i love that the coaching staff has been on him about that well because they they think he's comfortable enough to handle it and they're yeah. right and yeah. they're also correct yeah. those reads are out there yeah no it's true in the wind uh correctly pointed out because when i went back and watched the game i saw the play he's talking about there was a missed read to the scene that would have been a walk-in touchdown that is true yeah well there's the uh i don't know if he's talking about the goal line possession but you've got uh four is wide open wide in the back open, of the end zone open, and yeah. he so the offensive line blows the protection there, but there's still enough time because there is nobody around Jordan Wilson in the end zone. It's an easy touchdown. And even his running touchdown, there might be another option out there. No, I agree. I would tell you the uh, Jordan Wilson play that he missed. Can you really blame him for not looking to Jordan Wilson? I mean, I'm just I'm asking a question. Can you, you know, really blame him for not looking at Jordan Wilson there? I mean, sometimes as a quarterback, you got to take a you got to gauge and you got to do it very quickly. Is that is that guy going to catch the ball if I throw it to him? Well, there's nobody in the end zone. Well, I'm just saying my man isn't exactly Jerry Rice out there. He's dropped plenty of very easy and passes. I'm just saying. You are itching for a Jordan Wilson meetup in the parking lot. I'm, I'm itching for a Jordan Wilson to take it on down the road. But I will say he um, he's played marginally better lately. He had a good game against Syracuse two weeks ago. Last week, there was a key mm -hmm. MA, as uh, as Kenny would call them. Yeah. A key yeah. situation. But uh, it's okay. It's all right. It was a third and two. We, we needed that third and two in that moment. That's all right. So, He's been better. So Ryan asked this question. I'll answer it when we come back from the break. Are you concerned Georgia is all over Ba and Woody has been visiting? We can't let this offensive line class come apart i'll answer that next when we look at this class here in a second on a redemption thursday hope you're well out there thanks for tuning in i'm uh, jeff that is tom i told you that at the beginning but i just thought we'd reiterate in case you, we sounded different <laughs> it's the jeff cameron show 93.3 real talk radio war chant tv real talk 93.3 wants you to win a thousand dollars why because money talks do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth your next chance to win is coming up during the Jeff Cameron Show at 2 p.m. Listen out for the keyword, then click on the Real Talk Money megaphone at realtalk93.com. Money talks. Everything else can take a walk. Money, money, I just can't get enough.
Hey, no fans. Our partner, ISF Inc., is a national management and IT consulting firm located right here in Tallahassee, Florida, solving the future for state governments through strategy, process, and technology. As a trusted advisor for state government, including public health and emergency response agencies, our friends at ISF recognize September as National Preparedness Month and want to help you be safe this hurricane season. Visit ISF.com to learn more and download your emergency preparedness plan today. ISF, solving the future. Hi, this is Justin Colvin, founder of the Medicare Help Desk. I routinely were overwhelmed by the multitude of coverage options available to them. That's why I created the Medicare Help Desk radio show. Tune in every Sunday at 1130 a.m. where I provide clear answers to all your questions about Medicare. Live from Tallahassee, the Holy Mother of God Greek Orthodox Church presents... The Greek Food Festival. Bring the entire family. Enjoy baklava and other Greek pastries. Enjoy a complete dinner. Free admission. Come for the food and leave with the culture this Friday and Saturday, 10 to 10. Crawfordville Auto and Tire. Crawfordville Auto and Tire. Oh, hey there. I was just singing the praises of Crawfordville Auto and Tire. They do just about everything. Complete engine rebuilds, brakes, shocks, tires, oil change, you name it, they do it. And they offer a 12-month, 12,000-mile warranty on all parts and labor. Most of the time, they can service your car the same day and offer towing to help you get to the shop. Now that's something to sing about. Open weekdays from 7.30 in the morning until 6 at night. Crawfordville Auto Repair and Tires. Hi, I'm Jeff, founder of Witch Witch Superior Sandwiches, and I'm here to tell you about our signature witch, the Wicked. Why call it the Wicked? Some say it's Wicked Tasty, some say it's Wicked Large. One thing's for sure, with oven-roasted turkey, ham, pepperoni, roast beef, and bacon, as well as your choice of three cheeses, it definitely takes you from Wicked Hungry to Wicked Happy in just a few Wicked Good Bites, only at Witch Witch Superior Sandwiches. On Wednesday, the Wicked is just five bucks. Five meats, three cheeses five bucks. If you know me, you know how I feel about supporting local. You also know that I love dad jokes. So it really bugs me when somebody I know calls anyone other than Paul's termite and pest control. This year marks 50 years that Paul's has been servicing our community as a family owned business. That really means something. All treatment decisions are made right here, not some corporate headquarters 100 miles away, but right here. Local knowledge means they know exactly when and how to beat certain issues that are unique to our region. All decisions about North Florida made by North Floridians and being local doesn't always mean small. Paul's is the largest locally owned termite, pest, and lawn company in the region, but you'll always get the small town treatment and quick service also. Paul's offers a same day treatment guarantee if you call by noon. If you see something in the morning that's not supposed to be in your house, call Paul's and they'll get them all that same afternoon. It's that easy. For the elimination of termites or any other pest and for a greener lawn too, visit callpauls.com. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a -a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. The Jeff Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness. Two Tallahassee locations, Midtown on Thomasville Road, and Northside in the Village Common Shopping Center. Online at orangetheoryfitness.com. Concerned UGA is all over Ba and Woody has all over Ba and Woody has been visiting. Uh, he's talking about uh, Antavius uh, Woody defensive tackle. Uh, we can't let this OL class come apart. No, I'm with you. Uh, I did think though at varying points um, when they had what was it six on the on the line. Uh, I don't mean just on the line as an offensive line, but six verbals from the offensive line. That was a little rich. That seemed like a bit much. It didn't seem realistic that they were going to be able to get all those guys. Uh, One of the guys that certainly has been uh, drawing interest from programs that uh, are playing at a a very high level and recruit at a very high level is Alou Ba. 
Now, I did, and I the answer is yes, I am concerned. Um, I I think you know you can still you could probably still wrangle four offensive line commits, but you may have to transfer portal in here as well. I don't know. I mean, you, you got to do what you can. Obviously, they do have some guys on this line right now that they like. Obviously, and there are three guys in particular that we all I think can see are guys that moving forward you're excited about. Maurice Smith, Robert Scott. Uh, he's really just scratching the surface. I think he's got a long ways to go. He can be a lot better than he's played up to now. But when he's when he's healthy, he's a guy that you feel pretty good about. And then uh, obviously you, you, Williams. So you've you've got you've got good players. You got three that you like, and then you've got others that they believe are are going to get there. We'll, we'll see what ends up happening with Schrader. That injury really you worry set him back. So. They love him as an interior player. Though, they so did. You got a yeah. solution there. Yeah. So you got, I mean, and then, you know, it's not ideal to bring in offensive linemen uh, year one and have to play them. That's part of how we've gotten into this predicament where these guys get hurt, get broken down because they're playing against grown ass men. These guys have been eaten for, for lack of a better term from the Bama table and been on the proper supplements for years. Uh, and then you get there. Think about what you were coming out of high school. I'm just talking about anybody, you know, compared to what you were by the time you were 22 years old. So you know, it's a, it's a very different deal. I really like what we're seeing out of Darius, though. You know, and if you get Washington and, and Scott back next year, you, you feel okay about the situation at tackle. Maybe Rod Orr is one of those players that develops over the long haul. Yeah, I and know, that's a project indeed. Well, but that's also, if you do what you're supposed to do next week against UMass, we can get a better eval on where Rod Orr and uh, Lloyd Willis both are. You know, because you might have a two deep at that point next year if those guys continue to develop. And if that's the yeah. case... Then you're adding pieces and you're saying, are you good enough to play now if you're not no big deal, which is what you're talking about. You're setting up the long-term health of the program. trying to get us to where we can yeah. long-term have some damn depth. We never have any depth. When we put guys out there, oftentimes it's too soon. You can break guys that way mentally and physically. The other thing I would tell you is that regardless if we sign four, five offensive linemen, I'd actually bring in more than one transfer. Right. Uh, on the offensive line. Well, and that's where, again, it's important. And, and I believe the letter of the law says this. If we have transfers after the fall semester is over, right? At any yeah, point yeah, after yeah, the yeah. fall semester oh, is over. this is what over, we were talking about the other day. Yeah. You have extra counters for this one year. And what do I mean by counters? People that you could bring in. The, the limit has been 25. 25 new bodies can come in and, and be on scholarship. That's a combination of high school recruits and transfers. Now for this year, the special circumstance, a COVID rule, I suppose, fallout of covid you can have 25 plus seven more it's a if, beautiful thing. if you lose up to seven players to the transfer market after the fall semester so when guys are, are in the portal a little we, earlier we just had a guy leave yeah. unfortunately that wouldn't count that doesn't so count. we yeah. need our guys to wait hold just wait hold declare in december you're and, free to leave but we, we need you to lead leave in december and we'll get extra counters which could be really critical it could push you from a five and a half win total in Vegas next year to a seven and a half if you get the right guys in the right positions. Yeah, I would tell you that. Um, yeah, throwing numbers at the problem is a good idea. Both of the high school slash transfer portal variety. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm doing it. As uh, and and again, it's going to be a while. I think till we have the kind of depth that the good teams in this league have. I think we know that we we've been able to gauge that. If you just look at attrition. Uh, you can you can see that what, what's happened. I also saw the point on the chat. Dylan Gibbons, the ACC lineman of the week. I don't know about two years. He's listed as a redshirt junior, so I don't know if that if that shirt had already counted. If it's a super redshirt junior, that's where I sound like Lou Holtz, and I just get confused. But he is not listed <laughs> as a super senior, so you you can have him come back and play interior for you again next season. Do you want to play it? Oh, yeah. It's been a while since we've heard Lou Holtz. One of my boards got erased over here. So what what what? How did that happen? A board got magically erased? I'm not sure that's that, accurate. I, director, are you seeing empty buttons? Thank you. All right, that's all I'm saying. I'll, well, go, I'll grab it. I mean, we'll find it. it it's it's, it's got, not that the file is gone. Okay. Damn it, man. Uh, yeah, we got to get we we got to get organized oh. ourselves. Well, well, yeah, I don't get the brain the head comb. <laughs> the, the slow motion one is great because. Oh, the slowed down version is great just because you can hear the utter nonsense that much clearer. I mean, he's not even really saying words uh, for a long stretch of time. Yeah. Uh, it makes the normal sounding one like it's a hamster hamster dance song, though, because you feel like that's too fast. But that the normal one is actually how he said it, and it's just lightning speed. And you could just tell, I mean, they really were, I knew what he was trying to say. 
we frequently have to do this, unfortunately, with the elderly. Um, I know what you're trying to say. I'll go. We also have to do it with Jimbo Fisher. I know what you're trying to say. All these non sequiturs. Yeah. I got yeah. you, buddy. I know where you're going. You didn't the ellipses that are sentence. your friend if yeah. you're a stenographer <laughs> yeah. oh, for Jimbo. Oh, oh. But it never does get old, that clip. It never does. Well, well I don't get a break the head cold. My man. My man. Uh, he was uh, on the uh, on the verge of uh, having the kind of mental lapses that we grew to see more frequently. That yeah, was the cusp. Yeah. That was it right there. We knew we were mm -hmm. like, oh, we're going off here. <laughs> because the Bumblebee speech about USF, that was actually, well, loony, funny, and right. coherent. Oh, there are no aeronautical principles, principles that right. say that the Bumblebee, Bumblebee should, should be, be able, able to fly. fly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we said that in a drier setting. You might have needed an umbrella if you were in front of the camera. Would have been but, tough. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Going through that class, though, again, uh, rapidly here. Yes. I don't want to lose those guys either. I especially also don't want to lose, um, you know, th these ends. I mean, I just, uh, you're going to lose some guys, but let's. Let's keep the core hey, of what we're doing here. So this week, there was one tweet about Jermaine Johnson that uh, went, you know, FSU Twitter viral about his tape and, and what he grades at and how Mel Kuyper has him at number 25 on the big board. Good player. Well, but that also shows that other defensive ends who might want to come here. Come on, baby. Come on down. Let's go. Look at what we do for you. Look at this guy. We advance your cause. Has he not just 100% lived up to the hype? Man, think about how disappointed you are and by you, I mean all of us, on a daily basis, like when you anticipate something, whether it's a movie or an album or a book or whatever, very rarely do you walk away from that experience. You read the book, you watch the movie, you listen to the album, and you go, that was everything I thought it was going to be. Man, that was awesome. I couldn't be more pleased. That's the best one yet. That was great. They knocked it out. That's awesome. Never happens. Very rarely. It does happen occasionally. And then when it does, that's why you remember it forever, because it is so infrequent. That dude, we heard a lot of good things about. We heard that he was smart. We heard that he was a leader. We heard that he his work ethic was unquestioned. We learned that he came here for the right reasons, that he made certain assumptions about how he could help this program get turned around. All these pie in the sky, off-season stuff that a lot of times we like to categorize as uh uh, preseason lies, right? Off-season lies, where we all lie to ourselves about what a guy is going to be. He has been every bit of what they said he could be and would be. And then when I met him and talked to him, I came away even more impressed. I thought, God, if this guy can just play, uh, I love him already. He's he, he, he looks the part. He acts the right way in terms of working hard every day for others to follow. You know, all of that was there. And now he's producing. I mean, all the years of me screaming about our ends not being able to consistently get to the damn quarterback. Look at this guy. I love him. Yeah. I, I, you know, he's obviously not going to be a top 10 or top 15. Pick, no, I, I don't think, but he's going to be, you know, first two rounds in the draft, probably as a pass rusher, yes. as long as his resume doesn't drop off. The thing that was satisfying for me just on a selfish level was seeing him in, in spring camp for the first time and going, Oh, that's different. Hmm. I hope that's actually real, though, and not a function of our offensive line. Like, I hope that ability right. is, is, and then is you real. That it is, I hope yeah. my eyes are telling me the truth here. And then once we got into the Notre Dame game and, and subsequently after that, it's been, yeah, it's been every bit the legitimate threat that you think it should be, that, that I thought back in spring it could be. The one thing I would say, though, not to be a total Debbie Downer, but oh, the pass rush yeah. in recent weeks has been... Uh, eh. Not so hot, especially against a uh, North Carolina offensive line that's not great. Yeah, it hasn't been great. I do, I will say the one sack you got, uh, Jermaine Johnson, funneling back to the ball. And the best Sam part Howell was got depleted. That was a ball don't lie moment because they got out of a nonsense uh, forward progress whistle sack. Correct. The previous play. And I forget what they called hands to the face or something. Like they yes, made up a call. He, they called hands to the face, which it wasn't. He had his jersey yeah. and he just was holding it. Yeah. No, they yeah. made up a call. Yeah. There's no way that you could watch that and think hands to the face. His head didn't even move back. No, the whole thing is, well, listen, we're dealing with ACC ass. It's just sorry officiating every week. I don't want to go down that road because we'll be here in hour and a half talking about this same thing but ball don't lie well, i'll bet sam howell's ribs wish that they called it a sack of play earlier it was a glorious moment i loved it and let's see uh some more of it i'd love to you know i mean listen this is a um it's a team right now that's in our good graces 
They've cut way down on the penalties. Right. They've played smart. They've mm-hmm. played hard. They've been physically much better the last two games, two and a half games. Okay. All but, right. Let's keep this rolling. Baby. For being two and four, this is about as positive as it's going to get because you get two bad, you get two wins, a bye week, and then UMass. So you got a month of being relatively okay with things. That's kind of nice. If you've ever wondered about uh, Orange Theory's workouts, you know this. Uh, no matter the time of the year, no matter when it is that you work up the uh, the guts to say, I'm going to give it a try. I may be intimidated. I may be uh, a little overwhelmed. Maybe you even think to yourself, I'm out of shape. That's okay. Listen, they'll work with you no matter what you're at, what level of fitness you're at. And your first workout, your first class is always free. So if you want to give it a shot, if you just want to see what it's about and you want to go in there, Get in there and get it. Get after a workout. You'll see what I'm talking about. And it's a, it's a good feeling. It's a great feeling, in fact. There's nothing better. They even have that on the wall there inside of Orange Theory Fitness about the nothing feels better than a finished workout. It's true. It, it, it you know, sets up your day perfectly. So if you just want to give it a try and maybe you've been intimidated because when you walk by there sometimes, I can see where people would look in and be like, mm, I don't know. But once you get in there, you find out it's not intimidating at all. And you really get the family vibe, the feel that everybody's rooting for you. And really also, frankly, they're concerned with their own situation so nobody's staring at you in the wrong way or anything like that whatever level of fitness you're at get started orange theory fitness orange theory fitness.com there's two orange theories in town uh, if you want to, to know more hit me up and i'll, I'll give you the i can tell you that just personally even from going back and playing sports pick up ball in the summers or whatever when you're playing a game it's the same thing as a workout when you are so tired that you're basically a chalk outline mm. It's the greatest feeling in the world. Like it, for the first two minutes you're like oh why did i do this yeah and then the next 10 oh, you're just like awesome. whoo that was great. I yeah. think I might have generated an insight or two while I was doing this <laughs> workout. I think you figured up. something out about the interconnectedness of the world, the universe, in fact, all while running. That's pretty <laughs> much it. <laughs> kind of true. It's Jeff Cameron Show, 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chant TV. Having really fast internet matters, but when there are four, five, even six things connected to my Wi-Fi at the same time, it's the Wi-Fi speed that I pay attention to. Inner Xfinity, the offer Wi-Fi speeds they offer, not the, they offer Wi-Fi speeds over a gig. The fastest Wi-Fi you can get, that's a big deal because maybe you're a gamer or a streamer or a video chatterer. Or maybe you're like me and have a big home studio that sucks up some serious bandwidth. Whatever the case may be, you need Wi-Fi that can keep up with your lifestyle and all the devices that come with it. You need Xfinity because Xfinity knows fast Wi-Fi makes everything better. Now through October 31st, ask how to get a special offer of $300 back when you get gig speed internet. Or get started with up to 50 megabits per second download speed for $20 a month for 12 months with a one-year agreement. Click call 1-800-XFINITY or visit a store today. Gig Wi-Fi requires gig internet and compatible gateway. Actual speeds vary and are not guaranteed. Offer requires paperless billing and auto pay. And 103121. New performance starter internet customers only. Equipment taxes and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rate supply. The city of Tallahassee Commission has unanimously voted to join a legal challenge against one of the most controversial bills of Florida's last session, taking on the anti-riot bill. Governor DeSantis signed HB1 into law last April. The new legislation can affect local government's budgets, allows challenges of any reduction of a local police budget, and it gives the governor and his cabinet the final say. Local leaders are concerned about what they call a lack of control over the city budget. The legal challenge will be filed by attorneys with the Public Rights Project, the Community Justice Project, and the Southern Poverty Law Center, pro bono on the city's behalf. The work on the first ever solar panel build in Quincy is now underway. City leaders say the 1.3 megawatt system will improve the city's utility grid and help Quincy become more green. Once the panels are installed, the city will be able to generate its own power, which will bring the cost of electric down over time for about 7,800 customers. Completion of the project should be spring of 2022. This is Rachel Anae with your Real Talk 93.3 local news update brought to you by Macklemore Systems, Tallahassee's go-to Mac store. Check them out online at macklemoresystems.com. This is meteorologist Paul Frombley with your Real Talk 93.3 weather update. Partly cloudy skies this afternoon with a high of 87. Winds out of the northeast around 5 miles per hour. Lows dip down to about 65 tonight. Highs around 88 tomorrow. Sunshine mixed with clouds at times. Low 80s Saturday with a chance for scattered rain showers. Mid 70s bright sunshine Sunday. This report is brought to you by the Lawn Johns. For all your landscaping and lawn care needs, visit thelawnjohns.com. Right now, 86.
The 8th Annual Taptoberfest at the Brass Tap in Midtown is back. It's all happening this weekend starting Friday through Sunday with no cover charge and no entry fees. Bust out your Lederhosen and enjoy a hand-picked selection of local and craft German beers. Plus, your favorite beer-soaking snacks like brats with sauerkraut and scuffed pretzels with beer cheese dip. Don't miss the 8th Annual Taptoberfest at the Brass Tap in Midtown starting this Friday. Find out more on the Brass Tap Midtown Facebook page. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience a more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. Here's what you missed on the Greg Tish Show. Top 10 worst candies of all time. Go ahead. All right. The first one that I had were those weird lollipops that have the circle down on the bottom rather than a stick. Not on the list. All right. Uh, poor hound candy. Don't know what. <laughs> Can you even say that on the radio? <laughs> it is a thing. Not on oh, the list. Move on. No. Not all on right. the list. Apples with razor blades in them. <laughs> Give me that ding. You know it's on there. Yep. The Greg Tish Show, Monday through Friday, 6 to 9 a.m. Only on Real Talk 93.3. The Jeff Cameron Show is a production of the Warchant.com Multimedia Network. Check out Warchant.com today for the latest news inside Florida State Athletics. That's Warchant.com. Now, back to Jeff on Real Talk 93.3. Cool series. Not the one you and I want. Yeah, I looked at it. I looked at it. Come on, meat. What is this thing going to get done? Let's go. Pensacola, FSU, LSU. We've been waiting forever. Or Biloxi for Ole Miss. Biloxi would be, yes, yes, I'm in. Uh, All right. Season begins in February, obviously. So uh, that's right around the corner. You'll be here before you know it. That's not terribly far away. It's not. James Madison, Jacksonville, Samford, Mercer, then the cool series I was talking about. Cal's coming to town, buddy. That's cool. That is cool. California, come on down, Cal. I've been to that Cal campus. I told you that. Walked the campus, went over to their baseball stadium, walked on their football field. Did you run down the football field? I did run down that football field. You know, that's what I'm <laughs> that's do. I, I have to. Yeah, I had a good time. Uh, Florida Gulf Coast. My buddy David Mouton, I wonder if he'll be coming to town to, uh, to do the play-by-play for them. I know he does basketball. I don't know if he does their baseball or not. He does good work. The idea of uh, you doing your your signature Moulton, David Moulton. I, I call him Mouton. Yeah, he uh, he was on NFL radio recently. I heard him. Well, you know he's uh, Troy Aikman's right hand man, and he, yep. he's yeah yeah he does. Yeah, he's little, in the booth. Yeah, he's handling Troy when he was uh, weeping over Jimmy Johnson last year. He was right there for him. That was a really cool moment. It was. Yeah, yeah but was. David was a shoulder to cry on. Yep. There's something that needs to be rectified this weekend, sir. It involves your front lawn, the Cameron rug. I can't and believe I haven't done this. I, well, we've won twice. I know. What am I doing? These apricots aren't going to eat themselves. That's correct. And I've got to sit on the damn rug and do some serious catching up on the apricot eating and so we can celebrate properly. I don't know how I have. I even said something to Christy about it. And she goes, where is the damn rug? And I go, oh, well, you didn't throw the rug away. I mean, some poor sap worked awfully hard knitting this rug for me there's a penthouse downtown that's used for session <laughs> <laughs> there it is that's uh, yeah no, no so it's um it's in the closet all wound up tightly and it, you know she figured it'd never see the light of day again after i got it oh it will oh it's going to maybe i'll put it over the fireplace it took an own four Nance. start to bring that thing out yeah uh florida uh, so florida gulf coast then wake then florida bethune cookman nc state ucf duke uh, then we're on the road to Florida. Notre Dame comes to town. Actually, if you look at the, the the home slate, if you want to get excited about something, Louisville comes to town. Notre Dame comes to town. Miami comes to town. Obviously, you've got a game against Florida here. You've got that Cal series as well. A lot of really good home series. Um, I thought I heard TCU was part of the schedule TCU, as well. TCU, that's correct. TCU is also on here. That is right. That's late in the year. That's in April. Oh, won't that be nice? Ooh, that could be implications. FSU, TCU, Little RPI. Let's go, buddy. Yeah. So there's that aspect. I know we're smack dab in the middle of football season, and people are not 
wanting to start talking about baseball, but the schedule comes out. You got to mention it. And then the other thing is, I do like that here on warchant.com, we're able to now produce because there's actual substance, there's something happening. A basketball article today, Corey Clark wrote. Yep. I saw that as well. So, um, Hamilton saying he's not worried about uh, about the respect is the quote that leads the way here. Um, he said, we don't really worry that much about respect. Respect is something that you earn. And when you're in a conference with as rich tradition as the ACC, programs program have 70, 80 years of successful tradition exposure like the programs in our league have enjoyed over the years. It's very difficult for us to expect to make up the ground of those 75 to 80 years of success. So that's why we call ourselves the New Bloods. And our players... Uh, said we're not going anywhere maybe we're not as well known maybe i really don't know because we don't try to measure ourselves to that way i think they are known by now though i don't think the program is the roster isn't but that's college basketball in general no, there's so much turnover knows. yeah yeah I mean, how yeah. long can we use the new bloods moniker like forever or is that gonna have a shelf well, life of about this, another year or two you know if you go to three straight sweet 16s and they have yeah uh i don't know that you can use it much longer I mean, you're a perennial power in the Sweet 16. Yeah. I do have this vision, though, of, of the conductor. and we, we need a shirt. We've got to do some merch for a basketball season. But it's the New Blood Railroad. That's where the tournament <laughs> train's on. I mean, you could really play around with some of these, oh, these images. Man. And All we've right. got ourselves a T-shirt. Or maybe it's a nice little uh, sweater vest or something. You know, or, or a sweater. Like, I'd like the sweater vest. You basketball, know I pull off sweater vests better yeah, than most. Basketball yes. season yeah. is sweater weather here in Tallahassee. That is true. Oh, and I love it. I can't wait for it. We'll have a great time. See, this was all those years ago. This was the vision. Now, I could not have known that in the midst of the basketball program rising to prominence, winning significant games, becoming, in fact, a program of great significance, spoken of fondly by all across this great nation, that at some point, Tom, that would happen while football fell on its face and became one of the bottom dwellers in this sorry-ass conference. I did not think that that would, that would be the transition. I'll focus on the positive, sir. And the positive is now that you've re uh, released the baseball schedule to the masses on mm -hmm. Warchant TV, mm -hmm. yeah. that one thing I like to do at least once a year is park over by baseball, walk to the basketball game at noon, if the schedule allows, if yes. it lines up. Yeah, walk to the basketball game at, at noon, and then once we're done covering that or whatever it is, entertaining, come back to baseball and enjoy that. Just a day over there on campus, and it's day. filled with sports. With good weather. Hey, and you know... And one time for the Syracuse Nooner, I, I went to watch us play Alabama in softball, and we were in the garage watching that at, to finish off the day, which is yeah. fantastic as well. Now, I will say, yeah, being on the top up there, that's fine. That's doable. Oh, yeah. The rest of that walking around the garage thing is awful. People tailgate in there for football. I see people like in the in the bowels. What are, oh, we, no. what are we doing, man? But you get there either if you're at the front of it. So, mm. obviously, you need to be, yeah. to be able to see the field, yeah, see the field or, or the top level. Yeah, that's nice, especially when the weather's good. A little breezy. A little crisp breezy, in the air. A little, a little cooler. Ooh, maybe there's a triple header one day we can schedule. You know, I can tell I'm getting old because when we talk about these tailgating experiences and the places that you're going to go and where you're watching the game from and all that stuff, you know what? It occurs to me, and I've needed to do this for the last several months, and I haven't done it, and uh, and you bringing it up now has got me thinking about it, which I may obsess until I do it this weekend, is I need a new chair. And normally, say you're 20 years old, you don't think anything about chairs. Like a desk Why would chair? You? No, no, a chair in which you sit outside and watch oh, yeah. events. Yep. Th those chairs are vital. You got to have a good chair. Yeah. And I see people at my son's baseball game all the time in infinitely superior chairs to mm -hmm. mine. I've got the sorry ass chair that one picks up at, uh, say, uh, Dick's Sporting Goods or whatever. That's just your standard run of the mill. Uh, what's the other sporting goods store? The uh, <laughs> Academy? Academy, yeah. Like, Certainly yeah. not Sports Authority, sir. It, yeah, You'd you know, be just, dating yourself. Yeah. The, the, when, you know, so I just, I'll grab one of those like $10 jobbers. That's that not what you do. Yep. I've learned the deal. Well, you could go to those same places and get better chairs. You I, know I, I mean? Like yeah, They have yeah. degrees of chair. The ones that we have are from one of those two places that you mentioned, and they were like 80 bucks a pop. In fact, the animals still have one of mine. It, uh, it oh. was left because they didn't have enough spaces for it. It was a rainy day, and so we said, all right, you can keep it. Mm. But it, it made it through the offseason, unfortunately. But you're right. A good tailgating chair is important. Chair. They now make chairs that are uh that are rockers they're outdoor rockers oh you're gonna get a, a, a come on man i'm gonna get a rock you didn't turn 60 no no but they're cool like they, you can they they can they can serve both as just a normal outdoor chair that you see but if they have this other little device you like flip the switch and you can rock it 
in rocking. I like rocking. <laughs> I like rocking chair victories. Yeah, I, yes, I, yeah, I, I enjoy those, but I, just, I don't know about a rocking chair. I want chair. a rocker while I'm watching great <laughs> baseball. It'd be great. Is that what's happened to everybody from that era that they were singing, I want a rock at one point? Yeah, uh, now I want a rocker. I want a rocker. That's, now a t- you that's a commercial. Rocker. It's going to happen. I, it probably will, unfortunately, but I do. I want a rocker. I saw this woman the other night at the baseball game. I'm not describing this properly. It doesn't have like the arc at the bottom. Oh, okay. you no, know, it's All not right. like that, Tom. Instead, um, it's it's got a, a like a hydro like a, it's just I have to show it to you. I don't know. I'm not describing. You have it. to see it to believe it. No, it's not that kind of technology. You're not like my God. They they sent William Shatner to the moon. No, it's not that. <laughs> By the way, he's 90. Yeah. And I saw him step out of the the little spacey thing yesterday. And my man looks great. I know he wears a wig, and he's the original wig guy. He looks. It's his fantastic. sleep apnea device. It's crazy. Hour number two, forthcoming. Stay with. Me. From Lawson and Lawson Electric, let's talk about your 2021 hurricane preparedness plan. Are you prepared? Do you have a plan for when the power goes out? A Cummins Home Standby Generator is more affordable than you think. At Lawson and Lawson Electric, we can help you with your home and your business. There's no job too big or too small. We stand by every job we do and consider it a privilege to be recognized as the best in Tallahassee. Give us a call at 562-4111 or online at llelectrical.com. Applications, onboarding, payroll, termination. Business owners and managers, you know these are the processes that take away too much time from what you do best. But what if there was a locally owned, responsive solution that would charge you a fraction of the big national payroll companies? Sound too good to be true? It's not. North Florida Payroll Services is Tallahassee owned for nearly 15 years. And in that time, their prices have never changed. The reason North Florida Payroll Services can do that? Exceptional customer service that constantly evolves with the latest technology. From application to termination, for turnkey service for your payroll and HR services, trust a Tallahassee expert and save yourself time and money. North Florida Payroll Services, online at NorthFloridaPayroll.com. How do you define success? The power to true success is walking in the divine love nature and character of Christ. Tune in to Dr. John Paul and Minister Linda from Life Saving Ministries as they present their Bible study program every Sunday at 1 p.m. here on Real Talk 93.3. Hi, it's Chris Kraft. You want luxury that speaks to you? If you want a car that exudes class? Come into Infinity of Tallahassee and reserve your very own all-new 2022 QX60. It's sleek and it's sexy where state-of-the-art meets real life. Pitch and slide second row seats offer easy access to the third row or cargo. Even when a child seat is involved, Google it, you'll see. That's real life, and that's the all-new Infiniti QX60. Come get yours. Infiniti of Tallahassee, next to Kraft Nissan on Mayhem Drive. If you weren't the owner of Gordo's and all those wonderful restaurants, Eddie, what would you be doing? You know, I, I think I'd want to be a, I'd want to be, I don't know what I'd want to be, a boat captain or a cowboy. You know how to use a, a lasso? No. You'd have to do that if you were a cowboy. Yeah, but I've never even been on a horse. It's not my place to be on a horse. I agree. And the horse thanks you. Gordo's bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. This is Brian Kilmeade, and I'm excited to be on the air in the capital city. Be sure to tune into my show. I'll be giving you all the latest news, information, and the truth you demand. The Brian Kilmeade Show is live from 9 till noon right here. On Real Talk 93.3. Real Talk fact number 44. Banging your head against the wall for one hour burns 150 calories. This is Real Talk 93.3. Tallahassee's Real Talk Station. Real Talk 93.3 wants you to win a thousand dollars. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? It's time to win some cash. And here's this hour's keyword. Funds. F-U-N-D-S. Funds. Click on the Real Talk Money Megaphone at realtalk93.com to enter the keyword for your chance to win $1,000 in this nationwide contest. Money talks. Everything else can take a walk. Money, money, I just can't get enough. Coming up next, more of the Jeff Cameron Show, live and local on Real Talk 93.3, WVFT, Greta Tallahassee. Breaking news this hour from townhall.com. I'm John Scott. 
President Biden says the latest numbers in the battle against the coronavirus pandemic in the U.S. are encouraging. Daily cases are down 47 percent. Hospitalizations are down 38 percent over the past six weeks. Over the past two weeks, most of the country has improved as well. Case rates are declining in 39 states. And hospital rates are declining in 38 states. Mr. Biden speaking to reporters about the COVID-19 response and vaccination program at the White House earlier today. More than 10,000 employees at tractor maker Deere & Company have gone on strike. The United Auto Workers Union says in a statement the workers went on strike Thursday at midnight after the company failed to present an agreement that met their demands and needs. Earlier this week, a majority of the union rejected a cap offer that would have provided 5% raises for some of the workers and 6% raises for others. The contracts under negotiation cover 14 deer plants across the United States, including seven in Iowa, four in Illinois, and one each in Kansas, Colorado, and Georgia. I'm Mike Hempen. Also at townhall.com, police in the Windy City plan to defy the mayor's vaccine mandate. The head of Chicago's police union has advised officers not to comply with the vaccine mandate of Mayor Lori Lightfoot. She's demanding all cops give proof of vaccination by Friday or she'll place them on no-pay status. If that happens, Fraternal Order of Police leaders say 50% of police will walk off the job this weekend. Ken Lorman reporting. The stocks remain broadly higher on Wall Street. The Dow ahead 528 points. The Nasdaq up 246. More on these stories at townhall.com. One listener that stands out that I work with was this older couple that was interested in refinancing. They reached out to a few different lenders. And, you know, their credit wasn't the best. I know some of these other bigger banks, you just won't hear back from them, which I cannot stand. Not everybody has the 780 credit scores. And just because you don't qualify at one time doesn't mean that you'll never qualify. I'll walk you through what you have to do, whether it's two, three, six months from now. Back to that older couple, we worked with them for months and months to improve their credit. And we were able to get the loan done. We were saving them hundreds each month, thousands of dollars a year, finally got themselves into a situation financially that they can handle and they could start saving money each month for retirement. End of the day, they just could not be happier, which just put a huge smile on my face. We are United, United Faith, Faith Mortgage. Mortgage. United Faith Mortgage is a DBA of United Mortgage Corp. 25 Meadow Park Road, Meadow, New York. Licensed mortgage banker. For all licensing information, go to NMLS Consumer Access. Federal or corporate NMLS number 1330. Equal housing lender. I license in Alaska, Hawaii, Georgia, Massachusetts, North Dakota, South Dakota, or Utah. Where is the best place to find Michelin, Firestone, Dunlop, Goodyear, and Bridgestone Tires? Nice Tire and Auto Service. Where's the best full-service auto center? Nice Tire and Auto Service. They do everything from computerized alignments to brakes, tune-ups, and safety inspections. Where can you get complete auto service you can trust? That's easy. Nice Tire and Auto Service. 4792 Bluntstown Highway, just west of Capitol Circle. Warchant.com is the ultimate inside source for FSU football and recruiting. Get in on the action for free for an entire month. Warchant.com is offering a risk-free 30-day trial subscription just by entering the promo code Warchant30. That's Warchant30. Get in on the world's most active FSU message boards. Receive breaking news, stories from our award-winning staff, plus get exclusive interviews and videos. Just enter the promo code Warchant30. Warchant.com, your ultimate seminal sports source. Broadcasting live from Florida's capital city, this is the Jeff Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness on Real Talk 93.3. Now, stop what you're doing and listen closely. It's time for the Jeff Cameron Show in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.
came in for Russell Wilson. I didn't know he was still in the league. Uh, nor did I. I thought he was out of the league like ages ago. He was drafted the same year as EJ, if memory serves. So he's he's had quite the career. He's got the uh, the pension built up, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I that is crazy. No, he's made uh, plenty of money to be in the league this long. But I just remember him being a bust. Um, really kind of revealed itself pretty quickly. And then I thought, oh well, he's out of the league. I had no idea. My man was just hanging out for the last decade. I have not paid attention at all. Is that uh, MRI that came back on Russell not good? Is he? No, he's not going to. Uh, it looks like Gino's going to start, and, wow. and and I think it's the first time, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, uh, Wilson has made 149 consecutive regular season starts, uh, which is rather remarkable. You got to give him credit. That's a little Iron Man in him, but um, yeah, that's it. He's not going to be able to put. I just I didn't realize that. Uh, golly. I'm waking up to a new reality. Geno Smith is in the league, Tom, and he's going to be starting this weekend. That happens every so often where you're like, that dude is still going. Oh, I it remember happens a lot. Like if you, if when, teams carry a third quarterback is yeah. when you notice it the most. Well, that's where the outcry for a certain quarterback was loud and clear. That yeah. Joe Webb just got signed off the street. What is Joe <laughs> Webb doing? Joe Webb. And signed off the street. I thought he was dead. Yeah, no, no, it's shocking. Uh, just, uh, just I was reading an article during the break. I was kind of skimming an article during the break, and it was noting uh, that he gets his shot. He's been a loyal backup quarterback for a long, long time, and it's a critical juncture for the Seahawks, who are sitting at two and three. They're going to need him to play well, and it's time to let Geno cook. Let's go, buddy. But 149 consecutive starts. You know, it always gets talked about. Of course, the Bucks play tonight. Uh, which you, I think you can hear right here, right? On 93.3 Real Talk Radio, right? We got Bucks. That's correct. Tonight? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so what I was going to tell you is uh, it gets Ooh. talked about all the time. Uh, does the Tom Brady, 44 years old, streak of however many years and all that, I mean, how, how you know, will he play till he's 50? Mm -hmm. But I do think that every record that you once held sacred in the NFL in terms of passing numbers uh, will be shattered uh, in the foreseeable future by any of the younger players that have a, a bright future. Uh, because of the way the game has changed, they will not have to have played till they're 44 to reach some of these numbers. Um, you know, like a Justin Herbert, for example, is already lighting it up, and he is very young. And the, the rules in place are obviously pro quarterback. If they wish to play that long, though, the money yeah, is so well, good so and so yeah, guaranteed that to, yeah. the longevity factor, it, that also comes into play. Like, how comfortable do you have to be Justin Herbert is in line if the Chargers want to pay him market value, and by market I'm saying based off of Patrick Mahomes, to make it in the neighborhood of $500 million with maybe three hundred guaranteed. I mean, that's that's going to be absurd. And yes. Real quick, do you want to guess how long ago it was that Tom Brady hurt his knee in the first game of the season? Well, I had him that year. I drafted him. Was that in 2012? 2008. Wow. Wow. It was in the first half of his career. It felt like that wasn't that long ago. That is nuts. He was 7 of 11 that day in Kansas City mm. for 76 yards. Yeah. And yep. that was it. And that was it. That's all. And it comes all the way back because I have him this year, and he's been killing it. Love it. Every week I can realize it. Come on, oh, big dog. Let's he, go. He was the only pick to make in Tampa. There are too many weapons. You don't know where the ball is going to go right. week to week, yeah, but you yeah, know that yeah. Brady's going to be throwing it. Yeah, I got a friend who was like, oh, what do I take? Do I take uh, Godwin or Evans? I'm like, oh, neither. You don't want either. And it, because one week you're going to love them, the next week you're going to be like, damn it, man. Because, yeah, it's, it's it's about matchup, and they have so many weapons with Antonio Brown and obviously Godwin and Evans. And, you know, let's. I, I am excited tonight to watch. Do we get anything out of O.J. Howard? You tonight got, you got two catches last week for 19 yards do we get anything out of oj <laughs> howard tonight let's yeah. hope that's that's the reality I'd i like would to think, see that happen yeah tonight's a night where you go to page 12 of the playbook right and you just open up some weird stuff philly's coverage game is not that good they're okay let it's it fly. The throw it all over the lot baby it's all about containing jalen hurts inside the pocket that's the key to this game don't get crazy we run around like we got our hair on fire at all times. Phil wants to know if there's any softball news. I think there is. I think there is. I just saw, I think uh, one of our former players has been named the head uh, softball coach uh, for Team Canada. Really? Yeah. Uh, all right. Kaylee Rafter. Okay. I, I mean, I, here, you want me to, I'm, I'm I actually, was in the coaches club for this program, and I, I don't I don't remember that name, but it's, it's uh, a recent vo development. Volunteer coach Kaylee Rafter has been named the head coach of the Canadian softball national team. There you go. That's right here really on the chat. Cool. You ask about 
the softball team, and boom, Johnny on the spot. I just read something. There you go. There you go. Well, there's a connection with Lonnie there. She was a part of that staff mm -hmm. for the Olympics, mm -hmm. so that's pretty cool. She's very excited. Obviously, you can read her quotes. Go to symbols.com. It's not my job to tell you that, but there you go. You can go. A footnote on Russell Wilson. Apparently, he's out 48 weeks. One of our commenters, Never Lose Your Nerd, says that, and I believe him because he's a Rams fan, so yeah, he would pleased. pay attention to he's that. Pleased, yeah, right? I believe so. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, they're, they're in trouble. <laughs> this is not ideal. I was about to say they're in trouble, Mike. And the yeah, Gruden voice you is probably it. uh well, I mean it's an ill taste these days. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, uh it, it's it's yeah, obviously what he did is not good, but you imitating the voice is not bad. Oh well. Now Mike's like, what was he thinking about? That? Yeah. Oh man. Jeez. Well, yeah, sadly. Sadly, that is the reality a lot of people were thinking yeah. about after reading that. Well, the irony is he's in trouble, right? ESPN's breaking it in halftime on Monday night football. They're talking about it. Adam Schefter's going in depth about the emails, and it's like, guys, he was working for you. He's working for ESPN. <laughs> like, yeah, they're not putting that part in the lower third. I don't. I, well, while employed at ESPN, yeah, Gruden was rifling off emails yeah. left and right from his quarterback lab. They should. Uh, I mean, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't affect ESPN in the sense that they're not in control of John Gruden's bigoted views. You know, they can just say well, he was working. You think if it. he was working with NBC Sports, it might not be a part of the story for I, ESPN? I mean, yeah, I guess. I don't know while why he was would, working on Sunday Night Football yeah, I without Michael. Why you would? why you would avoid noting who he was working for at the time. It's not damning that he was working for anybody. It's damning what he said. Well, the follow-up question is, so nobody heard anything like that? I, according to everybody that's ever played for him and or worked with him, like Tarico, the answer is a resounding no. Nobody did. I believe that's probably true. Do you think John was walking around the football practice field uh, Uttering certain the words? football practice field, no, but you never I know mean, in a production meeting. I mean, you know, he you might, think something... he's with Tariko on. He's like, hey, Tariko. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I don't think so. It's amazing how people categorize the things they say, though. Like yeah. because the, the email, in a way, is more permanent and damaging. Well, it's, yes, yeah. But, so, like for him, that was like, ah, that's no brainer. I could <laughs> rifle off an email here to Bruce. <laughs> you know, like what are you? Obviously, there's so many levels of stupid there, John. Here you go. Picks. I threw them out there to start the show. I throw them out here for the uh, start of the second hour. I got Nebraska, who's been good to me. Now, they don't always win the game, but they cover. They've been a covering machine. Nebraska minus four and a half versus Minnesota. I can Minnesota. feel it all the way down in my plums. Minnesota. There you oh, go. That's good. Uh, that, that was, was a good, good one. one. That, was, that was solid today. Are we going to do a breakdown of Golden Gopher basketball at some point? No. <laughs> no, we're not. Texas A&M minus nine and a half against Mizzou. That uh, Missouri defense can go to hell. It's cost me a couple wagers this year. I'm not uh, now. I'm on the other side of every Mizzou game. Well, they're awful. It's so that's a spite pick, or is no, that no, actually no, on your card? Oh no, that's on my card. I tell you, the A and M could name their score. I will. Uh, here's the thing: when Tennessee scored 28 points in the first 16 minutes of that game last week, I was like, "Well, okay." Meanwhile, Jim was like, "Eureka! Yeah. <laughs> I got it. I him. Just run, smash. Let's go." Purdue versus Iowa under 44. Two good defenses there. Western Kentucky's a good offense. Old Dominion's not good at anything. Give me the over 66 in that one. There it is. I can feel it all the way down in my plums. Texas Tech minus 16 and a half against Kansas. Yeah, go to hell, Kansas, every week. Woo! Stanford minus two against Washington State on the road and Pullman there. Kansas State and Iowa State, another case of defense rules the day. Under 51 and a half. Oddly, uh, I could pull the uh, pull the Urban Meyer and not in that way. Uh, I had a dream about the... Uh, There's a lot of things that you yeah, do if you're yeah, pulling an Urban, Urban Meyer. Meyer so yeah. no, no, most of them are not good. This is me uh, talking about a dream that I had, just like he did, where God told him that, uh, what's his name, the safety was going right, to need to come to Florida. Right. Yeah. Well, and, it, was, it was actually a Zoom call of a dream, because Russell Wilson <laughs> and Urban were talking to God, because they've all heard God's voice. Right, they've talked about it, yes. Kansas State and Iowa State, I had a dream about that game. That's true. I did have a dream about that game. I think it's because it was one of the last things I read before I went to bed. I was doing a little homework. Uh, and, and then I dreamt I was going to that game and I thought, and it was funny cause in the dream, so it wasn't a nightmare. No, in the dream, as I was walking into the stadium, I don't, so I think it was you, but like the face didn't, you, I couldn't see your face, but there was a person walking next to me that I was going to the game with. And I really do think I was talking to you. And I said, as we were going in, why'd we choose this game in the dream? And I woke up before you or whomever it was could answer because it was 530 and my eyes opened and yeah. whatever happened. But I, I was walking and I 
it's it's the right question. My brain was in the right place because we always talk about wanting to go to a game, uh, you know, during Florida State's bye week. And one year we're going to go up to LSU. One year we're going to go to Auburn. One year we're going to go out to Washington. Then we're going to go to a Texas game. Then we're, we're always saying this thing, yeah, and then we never like, do it. Like we're Howard Dean. Yeah, and we never do it. And then, then you and I are walking in, at least in the dream, to Kansas State, Iowa State. And I rightfully said, why the hell did we pick this? <laughs> I feel like we would be furious with one another. Like, how did we ever get to the past the planning stage for this? <laughs> like, if you came yeah, to me and yeah, said, Jeff, yeah. Hey, listen, I know we're always talking about it. Why don't we roll up there and catch that Iowa State-Kansas State game? This, I mean, what the hell is wrong with you? You know, at some no. point when we develop that unlimited budget that we're looking for, mm. we could one week a season mm -hmm. just put in a random simulator, and we'll put this out live as it happens. So we're like, oh, oh my, God, my God, where are we going? Where are, where we, are going? we going? Yeah, I like it. Any game, every game. Well, we just upgraded our equipment, and once we have that mastered, we really could do that. Yes, we could. We should throw it on. And TV. you could send us there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that would be great, right? If only you'd stayed asleep by another 15 more seconds, you would have learned that it was Gary Busey that you were walking with and not me. <laughs> that would have been awesome. I'm going to the well, game. Why not? I'm going to the K State Iowa State game with Gary Busey. <laughs> yeah. This is amazing. Yeah. I'd be I'd be like Rip Torn or something. Like, <laughs> holy moly, this is gonna get loose. Uh I went under K State Iowa State. Bucks Eagles tonight. Give me the Buckos minus six and a half. I got Green Bay minus four and a half against Chicago and Kansas City minus six and a half against Washington. Uh, as an aside, I'm never comfortable if if my NFL picks feature the favorite in every one of them. I like to usually be on the other side. I like getting points mm. in NFL games, but this just feels right today. You can't, you know, each card is different. Each card is unto itself. You can't worry about your feelings in this situation. I like those games comfortably. So there you go. What do you feel most comfortable about in your NFL card? Those three games. I, Green Bay minus four and a half against Chicago. Okay. All right, yeah. I mean, really? Can you picture Chicago hanging in there? No, it seems like Green Bay is, you know, gotten Found it together. Found itself, yeah. That's what they do. They go away and they come back. I, I mean, I would watch, uh, you know, I, I, any game, by the way, back to our point. If we want to go to one of these other games uh, and we want to do oh, this. Oh, you like this year, idea. But we're gonna, I'm going to push it. Yeah, I'm going to push it. Gene's going to pay for us to go out there. It's oh, going to be awesome. Right. Gene, if you're listening. So I'm going to have you cover Iowa State, Jeff. All right. Off to Ames I go. So what I'm telling you is. Maybe it's for the Skyhawk Trophy. <laughs> that would be outstanding. Although they played this year in Ames. In Ames yeah. And lost to Iowa again because that's what that guy does. Always. Uh, I would I would tell you that, uh, yes, the idea of the simulator, and then we bring our our, our roadcasters, and we uh, and we and we go and we have fun, and we do a show from there. There's real value in this. We interact with the fans. We figure out what their traditions are. Uh, we we have a little tailgate with those folks. What if we end up going to like a, a North Dakota State game or something like that? Wouldn't that be something? It it would be something. Yeah, I think it'd be fun. Yeah, you do too. <laughs> you know it. We should do it. You'd have to do it during a bye week, though, right? Yeah, of course. You'd have to do it for a bye I mean, we so could we do Tallahassee ahead. game day from Dakota. I mean, I suppose we could. We could absolutely do it. And then we could talk about and we would have like there'd be video content. People would be getting interesting stuff. We I would, guess our, our pal Danny would have to freeze dry the uh, Zaxby's and send them up so that we could send that up as part of the platter. Uh, those are the wagers for the weekend. I, it was tough to come up with 10. I don't love the college card as much. I'm going to sit down and do more work today. I am interested. As the weekend goes, and we talk about the actual games and not the gambling, uh, do we do we get another steamroll job from Georgia over undefeated Kentucky? Mark Stoops, by the way, in talking to uh, the guy that covers Kentucky, uh, I told him that you know we covered Mark Stoops uh, when he was here, and we enjoyed kind of interacting with him. I always thought he was a solid guy. Uh, you know, uh, Mark has built. If you look at Kentucky's offensive and defensive lines, very good. Very, very good. Very, very physical. That number is huge. I mean, when it first came out, it was over 24 points. It's now 22. But, I mean, don't we feel like that game is going to be shortened because both teams are going to want to run the football and both teams are physical? And yeah. that, I mean, that feels under to me. And that also feels like a big number. Well, is uh, the cocktail party next week? I think it is, isn't it? Oh, it's two weeks from now. Yeah, two okay. weeks. Okay. So yeah. both these teams are on a bye. I was I was looking for the that advantage where it's like you know in a, in a good place in the schedule. Georgia has played a couple of meaningful games in a row in terms of uh, the the Arkansas game is is a top ten matchup, so you're gonna get fired up for that. And then it's Boat race that ass. It's a rivalry game against Auburn, so you come back for a game. Maybe you're a little bit more Boat beleaguered that ass. than LSU 
you know, that's where Kentucky's coming off of is, a, is just routing LSU. So maybe Kentucky's a little fresher. I don't know. I'm looking for ways to find it. But I, I don't hope see it's, it. I'd like to see a game. I'm just hoping it's a game. I got a question for you. If Mac, I thought about this on the way over today. Max Johnson, Brad Johnson's son, really about the best thing going right now at LSU. They don't have a lot. They've had a, they have a lot of injuries and now the losses are mounting. They have a lot of ill will towards uh, Edo, Edo Man, who will be going. where are you going with this? So if Max Johnson decided oh, dude. to come to Florida State. <laughs> we just got done praising Jordan Travis and saying maybe you've got a long-term I'm, solution. I'm saying if Max Johnson wanted to come to Florida State, I'm asking the question out loud. Would you be excited about that? Would you embrace him with open arms and say, all right, oh. let's go? No, I, I don't know that I'd be excited. Oh, man, he's. He's he's a player now. I, yeah, I, I understand in theory he is, but then you're going to set yourself Come behind. Come on a- home, Max. Oh, dude. All right. So we just had Jordan Travis best career performance. So what? Oh, there it, we go. So I, there's the honest response. So what? So what? I he can says. get okay. I can get a guy that can run every aspect of the offense. What are we doing? Why wouldn't I do that? You're already trading him. You're already done. I'm saying if that happens, if it opens up. How about this? Oh, okay, okay. okay. Let's you're play actively again. shopping. Actively shopping is what you're doing. Because LSU is a dumpster fire. I'm looking at them just like I'm looking at Miami and other places, and I want to steal their players. How do it's about us? How do we get better quicker? I think Max Johnson helps you. Uh, okay, he might, but I don't want to answer that question. Just like the fuller questions about, you know, would did he save his job? Like it's way too soon. Look how much season is left to go. Let's see if Jordan after the bye week, continues this trend. Well, UMass sucks. He's gonna do. He's gonna do great things against UMass. I'm sure. saying the second half of the season. Okay. I'm not. I'm not judging Fuller's future well, or Travis' future on the UMass game. I'm but- asking you. I'm not. I'm saying if all of a sudden there were whispers, say Brad Johnson called and said, "Listen, oh, finally, yeah, you'd finally get to talk to your yeah. hero." So it's too late. I should text Brad. I've got him in there. Oh, I can talk yeah. to Brad. Years. I should say, Brad. Hey, man, what are we doing? Oh, she's a mess. You know it is. Let's go. Come on back home, baby. Get your boy to come back here. The point is, you want depth and you want competition. If Jordan Travis is good enough, he'll beat out Max Johnson. But if he's not, he won't. Fine. Yes. Also, I'm not saying let's bring Bo Nix's sorry ass in here. I'm saying Max. I'm saying let's wait and see for the end of the season before we... The locker room dynamic after Jordan Travis has a good... Let's just say he has a good second half of the season. Might be different and may not be able to take another transfer coming in. Well, because you just settled the position. I'm sure the McKenzie thing wasn't that easy either. Jordan has beaten that and cleared that hurdle. Well, that yeah. there's six more games to go before I'm willing to commit to going elsewhere. Let's just see what he's got. It's just a question. I'm just saying if it happened that Brad Johnson called and said, hey, we're looking for a landing spot. What better place than Florida State University where I shined as a student athlete myself, Boy. and uh, you know, might you be interested in a kid that can can probably run every facet of your offense? There, here Mike? I thought the heat would be off of Jordan on this show for two weeks. <laughs> we go into the bye week after <laughs> played, he goes eleven thirteen played, played is the great. highest grade quarterback in the country. He played great. I thought we'd be cool for a couple of weeks, but we're still shopping. All right, I'm All saying right. that LSU program's got quite a few players that I'd be interested in. I'm not worried about people's feelings. I'm recruiting over people. I'm doing whatever I can to become a much better program faster. I hate the wait. I don't like this three-year rebuild. I know it is. I know it's a total rebuild. I got it. But if all of a sudden something falls in your lap because you got a legacy who's proven he's shown he's got ability, a lot of it, and he says, I'm interested. I'm getting the hell out of this sinking ship that is uh-huh. uh, Coach O and the LSU Tigers. How much of a statue is he? Is he like his old man? Or no, can he, he can run? move. No, he can move a little bit. No, I'm not saying he's, you know, he's not. Nobody runs like Jordan Travis, maybe in all of college football, but that's not the point. So are we projecting that this offensive line is going to be above average next year or not? Yeah. Yeah. I think you got three Re- core. Above average. I mean, it'll be average. You got three core. They run for 200 yards a game right now. They've got, they've got Their three pass core. protection is ass. It is ass. It'll be, it'll get better. You don't think Marie Smith fully healthy makes this offensive line better. You don't think that uh, obviously we would keep talking about, but Robert Scott is getting better and better as he gets healthier. Williams, you've got three guys. Yeah. Better. Dylan yes. Gibbons is back. Yeah. Okay, buddy. 
we're rocking and rolling around these parts. We just need a better. Yes. But does it arrive at the threshold where you want somebody who is not as mobile as Jordan Travis or AJ Duffy could be your Chubba Purdy? I mean, oh, like, I mean, I don't know if Chubba can play. We've been waiting for it. Well, we're talking about mobility factor. That, that's what I'm, I'm saying. I'm certainly not worried about Chubba's feelings if he decides. If Jordan play. continues to run the read option the way he's running it, I like our chances with this offense. Now, let's see if he can stay healthy for a month and a half but after the bye week. Again. If you if you're dedicated to running this offense for now, you certainly do eliminate certain other players saying yes at the skill positions to you. Not necessarily. They've what, messaged what, consistently what that they can win receiver? with any different kind. Yeah, well, type, I was going to say, what wide receiver, if we dedicate ourselves to running this, is going to be real excited about coming to Florida State? And somebody wants to get wide open well, because we're going to be able to run that. You get, system. you get a shot play here and there, and that's it. I don't know, man. I'm saying you got to look at all your options. Anybody is replaceable. You got to look at all your options. If Max Johnson decided he wanted to come to Florida State, I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm not. Jordan had his first real good game, real good game against a real opponent. He played great. He did. He played great. I'm not. I mean, I'm talking I, about this year. He's, I hear you. I'm just saying, like, I might even agree with you in a month's time, maybe in three weeks' time, but I'm willing to put my sword down on that particular issue for the moment. I don't need to rattle the saber. It occurred to me because LSU is a mess and they're going to get stomped this weekend by Florida in all likelihood. And, uh, you know, at that point, it only gets louder. Maybe he starts shopping now. Maybe he starts oh, looking. You up. are, yeah. He starts looking. Oh, I'll pick off several players. Who needs Black Friday savings? Uh, I'm looking uh, now. I'll take him. I'll take a couple linebackers. I'll take some of these recruits over here. I'll take Have you heard of you this got. extension on Google? You can use it <laughs> yeah. called Honey. It gives you a discount at the I, counter. I, I'm taking everybody. I'm like, we got this guy. We got this guy. Because the other thing is, and it's true, the, the part that I, I have a hard time with and listen, Jordan played great, and I hope he does keep getting better. And he's worked hard, and I have—I don't have anything against the kid. Are you sure? I am sure, but he is injury prone. I mean, there's no getting around that. My man yeah. will 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 get injured with the quickness. So I don't like having to worry about that every damn day. I agree. I don't like worrying about that either, but we've got a whole nother slate of games where we can assess. There you go, Melissa. Jordan. There you go, Melissa. She's cutthroat like me. This gives next man up a whole new meaning, and I'm here for it too, Jeff. There you go, yeah, Melissa. Certainly with kickers, right, Melissa? Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm ready. I just, it's something we Knowles have to think about. Man, you could have a legacy who wants to come home. He's stuck in Baton Rouge oh, on a sinking ship. Yeah, here comes the PR firm. I'm saying he, something. he's looking around. There's chaos all around him. Coach is about to get chaos to, the right of him. chaos to the right of him. He says, I don't know. I've always loved the Garnet and Gold, Dad. That situation was all wrong for us when I first came out, but it looks so right now, Dad. Can I go home? Will you call them, Dad? And Brad's, I'll call him, son. I'll call. Mike's picking up that phone. A, because it's Brad Johnson. But then B, he's he wants to hear. Max, you want to be part of what we're doing here? It's an offense for playmakers. This all could be true, but there is no <laughs> laurel resting here whatsoever. <laughs> Jordan Travis, understand this. On this program, you are never safe, no matter what you do. <laughs> ever. That's not true. What? What could he possibly do? Went out. If you win out, Jordan, I'll leave you alone. No, you won't. Oh, if he beat Clemson on the road, if they beat Florida, they'd take down Miami and end this silly losing like, streak. Thank God that slap he got through this game. Clemson was down this year. <laughs> Florida quit on Mullen. Yeah, yeah. Miami's well, firing the coach. Could well be. Hey, I'm glad we cashed it in. Let's use that cachet to go bring get in a Max, real quarterback. Bring in Max Johnson and A.J. Duffy. This quarterback room is, hey, Jordan, don't you want to compete? I mean, you've put together a hell of a resume here in the second half of the season. It's you, it's Max, it's yeah. AJ. Let's get it on. You, you won't back off. Back I mean, off. you just gave me the you gave me the ammunition. It's the Jeff Cameron Show, 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chant TV. TV. Let me tell you what T-Spark stands for. It stands for strength, commitment, teamwork, and heart. We don't ever quit until we've got nothing left to give. Our team is unstoppable. Want a guaranteed win? Call T-Spark Enterprises for your next roofing or construction project. We conquer all geeks. T-SparkConstruction.com. License number CCC 133-1204.
Hey, no fans. Our partner, ISF Inc., is a national management and IT consulting firm located right here in Tallahassee, Florida, solving the future for state governments through strategy, process, and technology. As a trusted advisor for state government, including public health and emergency response agencies, our friends at ISF recognize September as National Preparedness Month and want to help you be safe this hurricane season. Visit ISF.com to learn more and download your emergency preparedness plan today. ISF, solving the future. One third of Americans over the age of 55 have less than 25,000 in savings heading into retirement and 34% have no savings at all. Maximizing your social security benefits is going to be a significant part of planning for the road ahead. If this sounds like you or maybe even a loved one, give me a call. I can help. I'm Craig Collins with Collins Income Tax Solutions, and I'm offering free consultations to anyone looking to learn how to maximize their Social Security benefits. You can find me online at Collins Income Tax Solutions, LLC.com. Hey guys, it's Greg Tish here. If you know me, you know how much I love to grill, smoke, and cook outside. With the holidays just right around the corner and the cooler weather, there's nothing better than a backyard fire pit or a custom outdoor kitchen. But where do you start? We start at Hearth and Patio of Tallahassee. They have everything for gas grilling, charcoal, standalone grills, built-ins, custom kitchens, unique high-end fire pits, and you can even build your own pizza oven. And don't forget about maintaining your indoor fireplace. If it hasn't been used in a while, it's a good idea to have Hearth and Patio come take a look at it to make sure it's safe to use. Or you can replace the whole thing and transform the look and style of your room. If it has anything to do with fire, you need to call Hearth and Patio. Write this number down. It's 727-4282. That's 727-4282. Or you can always check out their website to view all their products and services at hearthpatiotallahassee.com. When the forgotten poor are in need of healing, they wait for a ship unlike any other. Mercy Ships, a floating hospital staffed by volunteers, heroes of mercy who donate their time to save lives. Every human has the right to have a place at the table of the human race. If you could just see the smiles that you get when lives have been changed, then it would make it all worth it. To learn more about Heroes of Mercy, go to mercyships.org. You went online to switch your car insurance to Progressive so you could save money. But then you saw a friend request from an old summer camp buddy. And now here you are, clicking through photos of his kickball team from 2011. Oh, looks like they won the championship that year. Then he moved to Tulsa. Oh, a new dad too. Yes, they said it was easy to save hundreds on car insurance with Progressive, but they forgot about the rest of the internet. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates national average savings by new customer survey who saved in 2019. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. The Jeff Cameron Show is a production of the Warchant.com Multimedia Network. Check out Warchant.com today for the latest news inside Florida State Athletics. That's Warchant.com. Now, back to Jeff on Real Talk Solving the future, my friends at ISF will do that in a moment. I think I just did the last segment. I think I, I think I've helped solve some of our, some for for some of our future. And 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 listen, you know, it may very well be that Max Johnson makes his way to Tallahassee, and Spencer Rattler makes his way to Tallahassee. And the next thing you know, you got a quarterback room with AJ Duffy, and you've got uh, Spencer Rattler, you've got uh, Max Johnson, you've got uh, AJ Duffy. Did I already say AJ? Uh, yeah, yeah. Jordan Travis. You got there you Jordan go. Travis, yeah. Yeah. We can tell your priorities. And, and those guys are all fighting it out. And the best man win. What mm -hmm. a quarterback battle that is. Now, admittedly, this would no doubt come at the expense of the great Tate Rodemaker. He'd be, he'd be long gone at that point. That's just too many people to try to beat out. Uh, and you might lose Chubba Purdy. Since we've never really had him, that that you know, I think people would. Well, the UMass game. Can we can we see some live ammo? 
you know, it's, I would it's, like, yeah, no, that, that's for real too. Yeah. I'd yeah. Love to see that. Hey, I want to do this since it's a short segment. I had the good fortune yesterday and, and this is just semi-serious in the sense that uh, I want the information to get out there. Uh, so when, when we were at our at last station, when we worked at ESPN, uh, we did a lot with my friends at the guardian ad litem. And uh, I've always taken great pride in that because this community has stepped up huge when we've asked them to, uh, in order to help out and advocate, uh, for Florida's children. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's near and dear to my heart for a lot of reasons that I've talked about it for, you know, in the past, but I'm not going to get into that now. Uh, the bottom line is when that station sold and we were no longer working for ESPN and we were able to work out a deal here to work at 93.3 Real Talk Radio and Warchant.com and, and, and all this stuff that we do, it's been great. It's been a nice landing spot. And we hope again to do the bowling tournament this year. We're going to definitely do that. I talked with Deborah of the Guardian Ad Litem here in Tallahassee. Of course, uh, they, they work with the Big Ben. They work with Leon, Jefferson, Gadsden, Franklin, Liberty, Wakulla. Uh, all those counties, they help kids. They advocate for kids there. These are kids in, in, in bad shape and, and, and really tough lives. And they don't get to engage in the childhood the way that we were fortunate enough to. So anyhow, I talked to her and she was so excited to find out that we landed on our feet and that we wanted to do this bowling tournament again. So you guys are going to be hearing about that. And we're going to probably do this, I think the first week of December. So put that on your calendars, everybody. Just kind of maybe put it in your notes or something. If you want to be part of that, we'll be telling you the details and we'll let you know where and, and, once what, we have them, yeah. and what's needed. Yeah, I mean, this is just something I wanted to get out there. It's always great around the holiday season. We're able to help out these kids and help out the guardian ad litem who, who does all the hard work uh, to help these kids and advocate for these kids and represent these kids in court and everywhere else. So it's great. And we're going to, we're going to try to do some stuff with them here coming up. It's amazing. It how is fast. Yeah. That stuff comes upon you too. Yeah. I was just talking to a couple of friends today. Actually, I was at a Metro and, um, when you're in the bye week, that's the time to plan for the holidays. Cause if you don't, the next it's thing just, you know, it just happens. you're playing Florida mm -hmm. and you're like, Oh my God, I got to go down for Thanksgiving. And once you're in Thanksgiving, it's too late, way too late. <laughs> so it's so, a good idea to make a mental note right now for the first week of December. Good first point. week of December mental note. We're going to be doing some stuff with them and I really look forward to it. And then I think there's some other things we can do. You'll be hearing, um, probably a PSA here real soon uh, that I'll put together uh, that lets people know that if you want to volunteer, if you are, you know, you want to, you want to volunteer and, and help advocate uh, for these kids, they need the help in particular. They need male volunteers. They don't get a lot of that. Yeah. And uh, this last year um, we, we were fortunate enough to, to, I guess, uh, spark some interest and they got some people to sign up and it makes all the difference. You know, you know, young males in this program oftentimes haven't had good male role models. And and so they need these guys. And a lot of people have stepped up in the last year. And it just, it just I beam with pride when I hear about it. So just something to think about. Jeff Cambridge on 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chant TV. Your local news now. Franklin County Sheriff's Office deputies pulled over four cars that were going an average speed of 122 miles per hour on Wednesday afternoon. FCSO said in a Facebook post that the cars were spotted by a citizen who then made a 911 call after seeing them on Highway 98. Among the cars were a Lamborghini, a Porsche, a Mercedes, and a Maserati. The Tallahassee Police Department is investigating an ATM burglary that occurred at a First Commerce Credit Union on Thomasville Road early Wednesday morning. It happened at about 4 a.m. The ATM was almost completely taken apart in the theft. Investigators canvassed the scene and are now searching for the suspects. Video footage from the incident shows pieces of the ATM torn off the machine and thrown to the ground and a white truck parked at the scene. TBD confirmed the vehicle was stolen. The vehicle was used to pull at the ATM and rip it apart. The suspects were able to steal an undisclosed amount of money. An average ATM can hold upwards of $200,000. This is Rachel Anae with your Real Talk 93.3 local news update. Brought to you by Macklemore Systems, Tallahassee's go-to Mac store. Check them out online at macklemoresystems.com. This is meteorologist Paul Trombley with your Real Talk 93.3 weather update. Partly cloudy skies this afternoon with a high of 87. Winds out of the northeast around 5 miles per hour. Lows dip down to about 65 tonight. Tomorrow, sunshine mixed with clouds at times. Low 80s Saturday with a chance for scattered rain showers. Mid 70s, bright sunshine Sunday. This report is brought to you by the Lawn Johns. For all your landscaping and lawn care needs, visit thelawnjohns.com. Right now, 87.
The best happy hour in Tallahassee just got happier. Wednesdays at Wahoo Seafood Grill, enjoy half-off appetizers from 3 to 7 p.m. Calamari, boom boom shrimp, gator tails, mud bug fries, and more. All half price from 3 to 7 p.m. every Wednesday. And if you're looking for a fresh lunch to break up the day, Wahoo serves up fresh fish tacos, sandwiches, and po' boys all week long for under 10 bucks. Visit Wahoo Seafood Grill today on North Monroe Street. Check out the full menu and order online at wahooseafoodgrill.com. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a -a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. Find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. Here's what you missed on the Greg Tish Show. Patterson High School, participating in one of the first programs for high schools to be truck drivers. They talked to one of the participants getting a hands-on lesson in truck maintenance and safety. I don't know, man. With as many different issues and problems as you have with young drivers out on the road. They're not the ones in the semis, though. Are they going to, like, jack up two front tires and then lower the ones to back? (laughs) Simple color truck. (laughs) The Greg Tish Show, Monday through Friday, 6 to 9 a.m., only on Real Talk 93.3. The Jeff Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness. Two Tallahassee locations, Midtown on Thomasville Road, and Northside in the Village Common Shopping Center. Online at orangetheoryfitness.com. solve for the future here in just a second uh speaking of which i guess it's, we could have i mean we were very serious about it last week and the week before and we talked about uh during this segment uh solve the future with our friends at isf uh and we were we talked basketball last week because we were in such a miserable place and then the Knowles went out and won and they solved the future uh, pretty adeptly, right? Uh, they figured it out. Cogent game plan, stuck to it, got down 10 to nothing. Next thing you know, rattling off whatever it was, 21 straight points, get you some. And it was all behind, obviously, Tom's hero, Jordan Travis, who played. <laughs> I see how this is going. No, 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 no. Yep. no. It was great. It was great to see. Uh, if you don't know about ISF, they help state governments solve the future using strategy, process, and technology. Uh, and look, it's... 40 years in business, worked 18 different states. They're local, but they're also nationwide for state and local agencies serving millions uh, of citizens. They've worked with state agencies like yours. If you're out there listening, taking on projects and challenges across uh, the landscape of technology. Look, they make it much more efficient. They use your expertise. They they get, they get their uh, focus together with your expertise and theirs, and you'll attain uh, much better efficiency, which is the key here. You want to get things done. You guys have goals. You have dreams. You have ways uh, of helping people. And, and state government workers work hard that way. So ISF is uh, who you want to reach out to. You can check about ISF.com. For for me, I was only half kidding when I talked about Max Johnson, Tom. I do think whatever you can do to expedite this process would be a relief for all of us. And the number one thing you have to do is fill this roster with better players and create competition. Competition is everything. Do you get the depth? Because you can avoid a four-year or three-and-a-half-year rebuild and get it to, say, two full, two-and-a-half years if you can just elevate, A, the floor with talent, and then, B, the competition is everything. And you see that in some areas on this team where they have competition in the secondary. Look at Knowles already going to get a start. as a kid that has played so well, came right in, willing to compete, pushed some of the veteran players. That's what you have to see all over this roster. That's not a surprise, though. Is it no, you know, that, he that he's great. a player? Yeah, yeah. He already had the instincts way back in the spring. You're like, oh, man. All right, that guy knows at least how to get downhill and play fast. Now, there are probably some idiosyncrasies to the position and some of the coverages that they've got rules and things like that that didn't master yeah, yet, didn't and that's right why right. he hadn't seen the field. Yeah. But you love to see when a young player who looks like they are the part starts to play up to that ability. That's Part of it is, is it goes back to continuity and development. Now, that's not me stumping for Adam Fuller necessarily to be back next year. I don't know. This second half of the season is going to tell you the future. 
and how Mike Norvell is going to solve it on the defensive staff. Yeah, it, it really correct. is. I think that's correct. Yes, and I think he's taking a big step forward into uh, retaining his job. You know, by the way, but you're seeing guys that are on the field with confidence now. They're no the thinking steps are fewer than they were. That's exciting, by the way. And I don't know of anybody whether they liked the hire or not at the time, whether or not it was their choice or or, or not. I don't know that anybody that wants to keep having to change out coaches. And I'm talking about from the head man on down. You you want to develop. If you're trying to solve for the future, continuity helps. You want to keep people around and, and have a, a, a consistent voice. Somebody that you know day in and day out you're going to be working with. The, this is their vision for the defense in the case of Adam Fuller. This is what we run. This is how we run it. These are your rules. These are your principles. Even if we're having a hard time as we did through the first four games, I'm telling you, this works. This is what we do. You want that consistency. You want that discipline. So my point to that would be let's hope that he's able to retain his job because it means Florida State's defense plays better and more consistent football. Well, that's the thing. You want your, to replace coaches when they're picked up by another university Correct. because they're that's being it. you know, hired for a better position. Highly a better sought job. after, yes. That's the one thing that I marvel at about Alabama and the, the coordinator lack of continuity, the turnover, the attrition at that particular group of, mm -hmm. of coaches – where like Clemson, you know, they'll pay everybody a king's ransom to hang around for as long as possible. And they've been lucky in that regard that it's good enough money and maybe the aspirations for some of those coaches aren't to take the next big thing now. It's to stick around and, and be with the program. But the binder or or whatever computer program and and file they have for how to hand off responsibilities at Alabama is something that if I was a hacker. You would, would want to know. You want to know, yeah. Like where where is that particular process? I understand on defense how it's a lot easier because Nick has his way of doing things. He's got his hands on it. Also, it helps when you've got sixty five coaches. It does. Analysts. There's no doubt, but you still have to have the hierarchy yeah. and the principles yeah. so that these players who are still there, not everybody leaves immediately out of Alabama. So the players still continue to develop. They have figured it out better than any other program in America how to solve when they're losing their top guns, not named Nick Saban. That's an impressive feat, and that's where we want to get to. First, we want to be in a position where our coaches are getting hired away for more money for the more right, prestige. Yeah, yeah, the right reasons, absolutely. Uh, so that is solving the future. ISF understands the way that state government works. It's the whole spectrum of business processes, workflows, strategies, you name it, and they'll uh, better leverage their expertise, your expertise, developing proven IT initiatives to support your success, uh, successful work, I should say. So, uh, yeah, do it. Solve the future with ISF. And Max Johnson, apparently. He's a guy that could help. It could help shape your future. Doesn't necessarily solve the future, but it could certainly help shape the direction uh, in a positive light. I don't think that that's a, an outrageous take of mine today. I think that uh, you would welcome him in as well. I think you would. I don't think they're so fragile that they couldn't handle that. Uh, now, again, your point about him, you know, meaning Jordan, getting better and better and better, and if that continues to move down that path, yeah, maybe maybe you're not desperate in that, you know, to, in that search at quarterback. Maybe you're looking elsewhere to add that depth that I'm talking about. And if it so happens somebody falls into your lap that's a really good player, then maybe you you think about it. I'm not saying that right now I would be actively pursuing this other guy. I am saying you're saying that you are, but but maybe they shouldn't be, right? I'm is saying that, I'm taking the phone call if Max Johnson. If Brad Johnson calls me about Max Johnson wanting to come to Florida State, and I'm just that is out of thin air, by the way. I ha I don't know that people know I know Brad, so maybe they're probably kind of inferring they think I'm. No, I'm not doing that. I have not talked to Brad about this. I have not. I have no. That's just totally out of the out of the blue. It just occurred to me, and it made you feel better than the current situation. Clearly, I just thought that the LSU situation's a mess, and they've got a lot of players, not just Max Johnson. They got a lot of guys that I'd be welcoming on in, in particular offensive linemen, if they wanted to make their way over to Tallahassee. I agree with you there. Well, <laughs> I just think you got good players that are going to want to flee that situation because that's an ugly deal. Well, let's make our like we're talking about with the coaching staff. You want them to be poached away because of the things we're doing right. You want players to come here not because there's an opportunity for playing time because we suck, because right. the culture is something they want to be a part of. Right. Well, that's what Jermaine Johnson did, who we were lauding earlier. He's a guy that a special man. He believed in yeah. Norvell. He believed in what this coaching staff told him, and he liked that they weren't uh, selling him a bag of goods about winning championships or anything like that. He liked that 
they they appealed to him just hey we think you're a hell of a football player obviously there's a great chance for you to play but we also want you to teach these other guys what it means to work every day he could get cut before his rookie contract is over and it still wouldn't matter because of the impact that he's potentially had for us like no matter what happens with the program he's made the most of the situation that he possibly could and he's gone above and beyond in delivering on what he said he was going to do in the spring to the media at, yeah. at large, but in the personal yeah. conversation you had with him. He's done everything he possibly could to this point to advance the program. And for that, that makes him a special player. Let's hope that he actually gets the benefit of a few paychecks, not just the one he oh, signs after gonna, his, his rookie deal. He's going to do well. He's going to do well. I mean, he's got the body type. He's got the work ethic. He's got the strength and the speed. He's a good player. He's a nice, nice player. Been very productive. We'll come back, wrap it up, get to uh, some of the baseball. We got baseball tonight. Woohoo! Football with the Bucks. Playoff baseball? You can't beat it. It's going to be a good Thursday. We'll come back in a moment. Live from Tallahassee, the Holy Mother of God Greek Orthodox Church presents the Greek Food Festival. Bring the entire family. Enjoy baklava and other Greek pastries. Enjoy a complete dinner. Free admission. Come for the food and leave with the culture this Friday and Saturday, 10 to 10. What's important when shopping at a gun store? Let's start with a friendly and knowledgeable staff. Then add top-notch service great selection and pricing and a personal shopping experience only found at a locally owned and operated business at red hills arms they're right on target while other gun stores come and go red hills arms remains tallahassee's go-to local gun store for all your firearms needs stop by today and get welcomed in like family Hey Tallahassee, this is Sarah with Seminole Autoglass. There's so much more to Autoglass than most people know. With the technology these days, lane departure, keep assist, forward collision, that camera is attached to your windshield. When the windshield gets replaced, it needs to be reset, and that's called recalibration. And Seminole Autoglass was the first to offer it here. We offer drop-off service or mobile service if available. Don't forget about customer service. Oh yeah, we have the best customer service in town, and a $50 gift card with your windshield through insurance. We're more than just a glass company. We are your local Autoglass experts. Better call Seminole. Let's be honest, we all have way too much stuff. Maybe your storage closet is full, your garage is full, or the guest bedroom is a mess. Call Southeast Portable Buildings, 580-6400, or visit them online at southeastportablebuildings.com. This is Patty Wilson. Oh, I'm sorry, we're ready. <laughs> hey, he's recording. I, why are you always saying your last name? It's I Patty and Scott. Everybody I don't knows know that. Patty and Scott. I don't know. This is Patty Wilson. No, this is. I am Patty Wilson. <laughs> What is the idea behind said promo? It's for Patty's Playhouse. We're on Patty's Playhouse Saturdays at 11. Tune in. That's stupid. Just tune in. Saturdays at 11. Patty Wilson, Patty's Playhouse. House talk with a happy ending. Each and every time. <laughs> Let your patriotism shine by becoming a sponsor for the first... You'll receive a variety of incentives, ranging from playing spots, goodie bags, to tickets to the camo dinner party the night before. The Association of the United States Army provides a voice for the Army, supports the soldier, and honors those who have served. To see how you can help support our troops that have given so much, go to AUSA-3204.org. That's AUSA-3204.org. If you weren't the owner of Gordo's and all those wonderful restaurants, Eddie, what would you be doing? You know, I, I think I'd want to be a I want to be, I don't know what I'd want to be, a boat captain or a cowboy. Do you know how to use a, a lasso? No. You'd have to do that if you were a cowboy. Yeah, but I've never even been on a horse. It's not my place to be on a horse. I agree. And the horse thanks you. Gordo's bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. The Jeff Cameron Show brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness. Two Tallahassee locations, Midtown on Thomasville Road and Northside in the Village Common Shopping Center. Online at orangetheoryfitness.com. Uh, once again, what did I do with those things? There they are. I took uh, Nebraska, Texas A&M, Purdue, Western Kentucky, Texas Tech, Stanford, Kansas State, Bucks, Green Bay, Kansas City. Those are the squads for Redemption Thursday. You want to see the numbers? It's been posted. I'll post it to Twitter after the show as well with the little menu item uh, from our friends at the Metro Deli. So you'll see that as well. Uh, but yeah, I kind of... Those picks have grown on me as the show has gone okay. on. Okay. Yeah, they've grown on me as the show has gone on. You like on. that card. 
Yeah, I don't mind that card. It's a pretty good card. It's not a bad card. It's not a bad card. We uh, endeavor to watch some baseball tonight. I'm looking forward to it uh, to couple to marry with the Bucks game as well. And that's why we tell you that Probable is brought to you by our friends at North Florida Payroll Services, locally owned for nearly 15 years, offering payroll and HR services, including full online applicant onboarding and integration into payroll. Save your company money and headaches today. Head to NorthFordaPayroll.com. It's time for how you say with the pitching, uh, probably. You see here, Tom, I've got the yeah, the North Florida Payroll hat there it is. today, buddy. Big time. You rock that well. This hat suits me. I like this hat. Thank you. It's a comfortable cap. You know, I got to be honest with our friends at North Florida Payroll Services. Both those guys are awesome. Um, when they gave us the hat, I thought, oh, you know, that's a nice gesture. I don't know that I, that hat's going to look good on me. Put it on. I was like, oh, I love this hat. I just wear this on my own. Not even for promotional reasons. I just like the hat. It's a good golf hat. Yeah, it's a good hat. So you, you, you hit a winner there, guys. Uh, all right, let's get to this would be. Dodgers Giants, 9.07 p.m. This is what we hoped the series would be. Even forced to a fifth game. We got everything we want. TBS, by the way, if you're wondering where to find it. Corey Knebel goes for the Dodgers. And Logan Webb, who was brilliant in his last outing, goes for the Giants. Who you got? Man, the safe pick is to pick the Dodgers because that lineup, I think they left 11 on base the other mm-hmm. night, and they still boat race the Giants. Mm. So if that order has come to life, then it really doesn't matter. But the Giants have been a team of destiny the whole year. Yeah, they've been Completely amazing. outperforming expectations. And it's in San Francisco. Let's go with Buster and the Giants. I'd like to see it. Uh, by the way, on Friday, which is already October the 15th tomorrow. That's crazy, isn't it? That's getting right around the corner. What are we doing? But tomorrow at 8 o'clock, Boston and Houston get it. Uh, get after it. Minute Maid Park. With a couple of TBDs. We don't know. Okay. TBDs. Just thought I'd let you know. And then finally, Braves fans, which you've been waiting on, and I, I'm with you. We'll find out who wins that uh, aforementioned Dodgers-Giants game. And then Saturday, uh, to be determined on the time for Saturday. Yeah, right. Yep. So we'll find out. But the because Braves play Saturday. As I understand it, could be wrong. But as I understand it, division winner takes precedence over record. So if the Dodgers win tonight, the Braves would actually host, even though they were 20 games worse than the stand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a yeah. weird deal. Yeah. Hey, really quick shout-out to Tallahassee's own Hudson Swafford, who today is currently five under at the CJ Cup there at the Summit. This is a, a, a great course in Las Vegas, which I want you and I to play someday. I, I have seen it. It's awesome. But uh, Hudson, of course, is from Tallahassee, so I bring that up. Also on my fantasy team today. Uh, <laughs> there's the real reason. There's the real reason. Couldn't care less about yeah. Hudson. For 51 weeks of the year. <laughs> well, I took a flyer on him late uh, for a variety of reasons. He loves this grass. And uh, it sounds like something I would say about Molar uh, for different <laughs> well, reasons. <laughs> yeah. All of the above? Uh, uh, yeah. But I, I took him as my last pick because I thought I'll take somebody outside the box who probably has no chance to win but could have a day. In the, in the league that I play in, you get points and uh, potato chips for winning there days, for winning go. days, Tom. And he's having a winning day right now there is what go. he's doing. He's having a winning day. So he must have been out early in the morning. Yeah, he's already played 13 holes. He's still out there now, and there's some other guys to come later that I'm excited to You'll see. Need a little double-double here. I hope you didn't jinx him. Yeah, I, I know. I, I don't know if I should have brought it up, but I did bring it up, and damn it. Come on, Tallahassee's own Hudson Swafford. Hang in there, buddy. Do it for Tallahassee. Do- a reason yeah that's it it's just tallahassee it's all i'm rooting for i've also got uh, a couple old men well i got louis ustazen in this event too come on louis let's go what a year you had a year ago good work out of you tom good work matthew thanks to all of you be well have a great night enjoy the sports we'll talk to you tomorrow on a libations friday